be happy now? Is this good enough? Because I'm tired of seeing people say EDC ain't doing nothing. EDC sleeping on a job. He's in hibernation, man. EDC, wake up. And now you getting move after move after move. Now you getting a visit at a position that so many Ravens fans been asking for. Wide receiver. And it is obviously a need that the Baltimore Ravens have at the wide receiver position. And now if this move does go through then this will give you that much more flexibility heading into the draft with how to address it. Team, keep it clean. We got some big news for you that I think a lot of y'all are going to like. I know there's going to be some people that say, oh, I don't like it no matter what. And that's okay. It is what it is. But anyway, before we get into this news, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and let's run those likes all the way up, baby. Anyway, EDC, he be reading the comment section of the video. He said, man... Boy, these Ravens fans, they hard to please, huh? Hey, and we are. We, we, we really are. We want what we want. We want who we want. And we want it where we want it. And fans have been asking for EDC, especially since it was known that uh, they weren't bringing Odell Beckham Jr. back. They said, hey, we need to address this wide receiver room, my friends. Because we got a Zay Flowers. Got high hopes for him. We know he's going to crush it. Got a Nelson Aguilar. We know he's a supplementary piece to the wide receiver room. You got a Tylen Wallace. He's in his... Third year, I believe, going into this year. You got Rashad Bateman. Big year for Rashad Bateman, but you don't know what you're going to get yet. You, you got high hopes, but you got to see some stuff to believe it. And him and Lamar got to get on that same page because their connection is just way off, and that changes everything. But then it's like, what after that? Because you lost Devin DuVernay. You, again, got rid of Odell Beckham Jr. You, you, you got that little void to sort of feel at wide receiver. And you could address it uh, through the draft. You could draft one of those speedy guys, up-and-coming guys. I know it's a couple of wide receivers from Texas that a lot of Ravens fans like, like Mitchell, like Worthy. We can get into some more later, but you could address it through the draft. But, you know, the Baltimore Ravens, they love addressing it through uh, free agency as well. They love having that vet. And the Baltimore Ravens had continued to be linked to Michael Thomas. That was a name that has been floating around for the longest with the Baltimore Ravens. We'll see what happens if anything happens there. But Ravens said, we're going to go in a different direction for now. And we know this guy. He recently got cut from the Dallas Cowboys. And he at once, he was a little producer. He was a producer. He wasn't their first option at the wide receiver position but he was used to be one of their top guys and that was all up until cd lamb showed up and then transitioned into being their number one receiver but michael gallup the baltimore ravens have a visit scheduled with michael gallup uh tomorrow on thursday so he is going to visit the baltimore ravens now let me just forewarn y'all just because because this is a possibility he could visit with the baltimore ravens tomorrow and leave no deal it happens it happens it has happened before with plenty of free agents. It could happen again with him tomorrow. A visit is just that. It's a visit. Yeah, of course, we want stuff to be signed. We want people to be signed. We want EDC to be making these moves. But him visiting, it does not. If he visits and leaves, it does not mean like, oh, that's over. Oh, he ain't coming back. Oh, we're not going to sign him. Oh, we ain't getting Michael Gallup. It does not mean that. So let me just forewarn you there real quick. Okay, my friends? I, I, I just had to. Anyway. When you look at Michael Gallup, and that's a pass-heavy offense over there with the Cowboys. A lot of it could be considered empty calories. We don't need to get into that right now. That's not important. When you look at Michael Gallup, you look at his numbers. Um, 2018, uh, he had 33 catches for 507 yards, two touchdowns. 2019, big breakout season. He had 66 catches for 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. That, that was the one right there, and that was his best season. But then in 2020, he had 59 catches for 843 yards and five touchdowns. So that was still a good season, too. But that was the season that they drafted CeeDee Lamb. Because if you look closely, you see his numbers take a huge dip after that. 2021, 35 catches for 445 yards, two touchdowns. 2022, now he was dealing with an injury that year because in 2021, uh, week 17 of 2021 season, he tore his ACL. And that's the worst time to, to tear. Like right at the end of the season, too, that sucks. But anyway, uh, 2022, he had 39 catches for 424 yards, four touchdowns. 2023, last year, he had 34 catches for 418 yards and two touchdowns. So you saw once CD got there, then everything shifted. Everything shifted. 
So with Michael Gallup, role player, role player, somebody capable of being that number two receiver, um, somebody who can come in, make some plays, somebody who doesn't have to be the guy, doesn't have to be the Baltimore Ravens, number one focus, doesn't have to be the end-all, be-all at the wide receiver position. No, 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 he doesn't have to be that. But somebody who can come in and contribute. And you need players like that. You need players who you can add on a little extra load and they can handle it. Because, I mean, if Michael Gallup could handle playing for the Dallas Cowboys and all the pressure that comes with that, he could certainly handle playing for the Baltimore Ravens, right? And especially at the receiver position, right? Zay Flowers. Um, people ask who the Baltimore Ravens' number one wide receiver is right now. Who's their number one target? Going into this season, I would have to say it would be Zay Flowers, I would think, because Zay Flowers is somebody who the Baltimore Ravens are going to find a way to get that ball to. They're going to find a way to get the ball to him every single game in different ways. Lamar going to give him his shots, whether it's a deep shot, short shot, uh, end around, toss in the backfield, screen plays, whatever. They going to find a way to get Zay Flowers that ball uh, be, because it's smart. Zay Flowers, when he got the ball in his hands, he makes plays. When he don't got the ball in his hands, he makes people look silly, very silly. Before, he ends up getting the ball in his hands two seconds later because he ends up being wide open. Now, <laughs> if Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman could get on that same page because Rashad Bateman be open. He be open. He just don't be getting the ball like that. And him and Lamar, they, they just off. So if they could get that down pat, oh, man. Like... People won't even be thinking about Michael Gallup. And that's something to think about, man. If Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman could get on the same page, we wouldn't even be having conversations about a Michael Gallup. We wouldn't even be wondering what Nelson Aguilar's role is going to be with the Baltimore. No, because Zay Flowers and Rashad Bateman, got, you got two excellent route runners right there. And it's not all about route running. It's a lot more to being a receiver than route running, but that's such a big part of it. And those two always get open. Always. But Lamar only got a connection with one of them. And that could be for a lot of different reasons. We know with Rashad Bateman, him and Lamar, the timing has just ah, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. It's been frustrating. It's been tough because it's messed up. Everything Their timing has just never been able to get on the same page. And when I say timing, that means a lot of different things. Obviously, they're timing on the field, but they're timing off the field, too. They've never been able to consistently get it down. Because Rashad Bateman's rookie year, hey, we drafted Rashad Bateman. We all hype. We all happy. Lamar's there. He hype. He's happy. Like, oh, yeah, Rashad Bateman going to be something serious. He's going to be nice. Rashad Bateman got hurt. I think he had a groin injury. Oh, it's week to week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we saw how that went. He missed like the first five, six weeks of the season, something like that. But then when Rashad Bateman finally came came back, finally made his debut, oh man, him and Lamar looking great together. Oh man. Every catch Rashad Bateman getting is going for a first down. He getting yakking all that. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is the rookie that we've been excited to see. Let's go. Then Lamar Jackson gets hurt. Missed the rest of the season. Oh, great. There we go. Then following uh, offseason, Lamar's back. He's healthy. And then Rashad Bateman, uh, he, I think he was a little hurt still too. Um, but he was dealing with his stuff. But anyway, they started the season together. It's like, oh, okay, they go Rashad Bateman. Hey, making a big play. Making a, the, the big catch on uh, Xavier and Howard made the big play in the, uh, in the Jets game, first game of the season. Oh, yeah, let's go Rashad. Oh, yeah, we got one, baby. <laughs> let's get it. Then Rashad Bateman has a foot injury. He's done for the rest of the year. And it's like, oh, okay, great. Right. So then this past offseason, it's like, all right, Rashad Bateman, hopefully he'll be healthy. Lamar Jackson, hopefully he'll be healthy. They're both coming back from injuries. All right, let's go. Lamar's back. Rashad's back. And then Rashad, he had, I think he had a back injury. He had something he was dealing with. And he missed chunks of the offseason. So those two never really got to get it going. But I bring all that up to say that 
Michael Gallup, yeah, he's visiting with the Baltimore Ravens tomorrow. That's great. And again, the more quality depth you have, the better. But Rashad Bateman, if, if Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman can get this thing going, the wide receiver room, not that it'll be an afterthought, but just all the pressure that that is being talked about, all the, oh, we got to add a wide receiver. We got to have receiver this, receiver that. Y'all know I'm all about them wide receivers. Y'all know that. Been that way for years, still that way now. But if Lamar Jackson and Rashad Bateman can get it together, if they can get it going, then that would just take so much pressure off of what needs to be done at the wide receiver room. Now, I get it. I do get it because people can say, well, you, you, you can't bank on Lamar and Rashad Bateman getting it. You gotta, you still gotta make some moves, and, and that part I get. I get. This is just what we were talking about earlier with Andrew Voorhees, with the Ravens not putting all their eggs in that basket because it's a big risk at the edge position. In my opinion, the same thing with David Ajabo. You can't put all your eggs in that basket because he's just been hurt. You, you know, there's potential there, but you can't be like, ah, right, you know what? It's gonna David Ajabo. We relying on you 100. Let's go, baby. You want him to to, to show out, but you cannot trust him right now all the way. So it's, it's tricky. But you do obviously hope for the best in every situation with all these injuries that these guys have had, with all these guys that haven't had their proper opportunities and whatnot, with new guys coming about, with guys that are getting back. You just hope for the best, obviously. But at the same time, any smart business person, they're going to look for other options too. Because you cannot rely on something that hasn't been coming through for you recently. You got to be smart about it. So with them bringing in a guy like a Michael Gallup for a visit, with whoever else they may bring in at the wide receiver position, again, because tomorrow, just because he visits, they, they may not sign right away. He may have other visits lined up. It happens. Look at our guy, Jadavian Clowney. He's just on a world tour right now. And we just sitting back waiting like, Jadavian, when you coming back, baby? But... We just got to wait this thing out. But it is, again, it's always a good thing to find out what your options are. Because what you have on the team already, the potential is there. But you can never just go based off of potential, especially if that potential ain't been reached yet.